You want to know what the computer engineering degree is really like? Maybe you're curious which classes demand regular all-nighters and which hold the keys to unlocking a prosperous career. Well, today we'll be getting into all of that and more in the Computer Engineering Roadmap, University Edition. In case you haven't heard of it before, computer engineering is a dynamic field nestled right between the discrete hardware of electrical engineering and the vibrant practicality of software engineering. These engineers mesh together electronics and programming skills to develop everything from the device you're watching this on to the infrastructures and protocols supporting all of your favorite websites. A quick FYI, we have another video that gives real engineers perspectives on computer engineering as a whole, so go watch that if you want more context on the major, career, and lifestyle. But now it's time to map out the entire computer engineering degree so you know what you're signing up for. To simplify this, we've split up the Comp B curriculum into four different sections. Foundational Subjects, Computer Engineering Core, Concentration Paths, and the famed Capstone Design Course. Before we start, a quick reminder that each university does things a little differently, but the ideas in this video will hold true for any computer engineering student. Now make sure you're buckled up. We've got an engineering degree to get through. Starting with the foundational subjects, the first hurdle computer engineers face is the general education and core courses. These classes are intended to round out your curriculum to make sure that you know more about the world than just C syntax and Ohm's law. Okay, all jokes aside, we recommend taking these courses seriously and choosing ones that you're really interested in. This way, you'll enjoy yourself, meet like-minded people, and manage to get in some, you know, good old personal growth. In this early stage of the degree, you'll also be entering your elementary math and physics classes. These are the base subjects that all of computer engineering builds off of, so make sure you take solid notes. Now, here's the math you should expect in your degree. You'll have Calculus 1, 2, 3, and 4, consisting of everything from easy limits to pages upon pages of triple integrals. Linear Algebra teaches you about matrices of numbers and useful ways to handle data while differential equations provide a mathematical model for objects like springs or damping signals that jump back and forth until equilibrium is reached. Signals and Systems, on the other hand, discusses the math behind different signal types, specifically how to classify and manipulate them with things like filters and feedback. This class is… pretty convoluted. <laughs> Uh, you'll get that joke in a few months. Anywho, probability and statistics is next, covering everything from basic bell curves to the law of large numbers and Markov chains. And finally, discrete math introduces you to sets, permutations, state machines, and challenging logical problems to prepare you for the engineering ahead. Nice! Math is down, and we're on to physics. Students typically find these more fun, but just as difficult as the math. After all, you got to do cool stuff like this in your labs. You'll start off learning elementary mechanics and move on to electricity and magnetism, thermodynamics, and a little bit of quantum mechanics. Pay especially close attention to electricity and magnetism. It'll pay off in the circuits classes later. For the most part, all of the content from your math classes will be tossed out the window when you graduate, but you'll likely need a formula or concept here and there, so make sure to take good notes and save them throughout your entire degree. Physics concepts, on the other hand, are more likely to be used in your career, especially if it's hardware related. But more on that later. We also need to warn you, many engineers regard these math and physics courses as the hardest part of their degree. Yeah, you heard me right, these introductory courses can be the toughest. Although the problems get more technically challenging later on, the difficulty and rapid progression of these courses just completely shock students used to slower-paced high school classes. This is why you'll see the most students dropping out of the degree in this stage. We have a number of tips to make sure you're not in one of these sinking ships, to be discussed in a later video. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Okay, now that that shameless self-plug is over, we can focus on the fact that you've officially made it through the Weeder courses and are sprouting right into the Computer Engineering core. What's cool about these courses is they're chock full of content that you're actually likely to use in your profession later down the road. Let's check it out. In the center, we have a split of programming and circuits, because as you know, this major is effectively where these two concentrations meet. 
We'll start over on the programming side of things and loop our way over to the hardware. In this programming jungle, we have your conventional programming class, most likely in Python. This will actually be two successive classes that build on each other, meaning you'll be ever more confident when slapping Python on your resume. The first introduces the basics like conditionals, user input and output, and class types. The follow-up course gets into more intricate practices like multi-threading, interacting with databases, and utilization of more advanced data structures and algorithms. Which transitions perfectly into the next core course, data structures and algorithms. This is a fundamental computer science class that delves into the most efficient ways to search, sort, store, and manipulate data. This is extremely useful if you go into any career involving programming. If this is the case, make sure to retain as much info as possible, because programming interviews will pull a lot of questions from this course specifically. Continuing across the spectrum of core computer engineering courses, we start to see some hardware peeking over the horizon. It's the Embedded Systems Design course. This is an all-inclusive introduction to the design process for one of the most popular computer engineering careers. Embedded Software and Systems Engineering Check out our video detailing the embedded career if you're interested. Anyways, this course covers microprocessor and microcontroller architecture, bus and memory organization, peripheral communication, and a ton more topics prevalent to real-life computer engineering designs. Moving on to our next course, we have our Computer Systems and Programming in C course. This course introduces you to the C programming syntax and practices along with shell programming, debuggers, source code control, and other practical tools. This course is concurrent with a lab where you'll program more microcontrollers or processors to make something like digital dice or Pong-like video games. This is a pretty integral course for computer engineers that go on to use microcontrollers later on in their career. So make sure you're soaking up as much info as you can here too. Continuing on with the Comp E Core, we find ourselves at a very unique part of the curriculum. Here, the Computer Systems and Assembly Language course has you programming in a low-level assembly language. This means you're actually assigning bare bones, ones and zeros to a number of registers on a microprocessor to accomplish simpler goals like basic addition and multiplication. If it sounds easy, it's not. But with tons of practice and probably a few late nights, you'll get it done. Besides this lab side of the course, you'll learn about digital logic, the compiling and assembly process, and basics of system software. Now we're getting deeper in the hardware side of things and arriving at the digital logic design course. This class has flip-flops, muxes, logic gates, wait, logic gates, not log gates. Man, they do not pay me enough for this. Anyways, you'll finish with learning about these types of logic gates, finite state machines, and other useful tools for digital circuit design in this course. Just like the last few courses, this one has a lab and will have you programming an FPGA, which has your programmed firmware flashed onto it so it can physically put together the digital circuits that you design. Now hang on tight, we're closing in on the last few classes in the Computer Engineering core, arriving at the Computer Architecture course. You'll learn all the computer basics, like memory systems, cache, evolution of computers, and their internals. And finally, we've arrived at the farthest corner in the circuits portion of our Comp E core, where you can get an in-depth dive into everything analog electronics. You'll learn about the electromagnetic powers of capacitors, inductors, resistors, how they react to various power sources, and different methods to solve all the fun types of circuitry. And with that, you've officially traversed across the computer engineering core and gained a solid viewpoint of the field. But before you can continue, you must make an important choice. You have to choose one of the four concentration paths for the remainder of your degree and for your early career as a computer engineer. Remember that you can always switch concentrations and careers later down the road, but it always saves some headaches if you can get it right on the first try. Just like earlier, we'll start with the most programming-centric concentration and then make our way over to the hardware side of things. The first concentration we have is the System Programming Path, which is the closest to a computer science degree. Here, you'll specialize in software for computer systems, meaning you'll learn how to efficiently create or use operating systems, memory, parallel programming, compilers, file systems, 
and more god-tier software skills. This path prepares you for building any type of large software system like cloud computing, real-time systems, or healthcare or financial software infrastructures. Next is the network's concentration, rooted deeply in software just like the last one. Here, you'll learn the intricacies of computer networks of all shapes and sizes, from local Wi-Fi networks to the vast behemoths like Facebook and Google. Students learn how to develop the client and server side of things and the pipelining between the two. They also get into autonomous computer interactions, network security, and everything else that comes with networking. Now, the third concentration is called the computer systems concentration, which starts getting into some hardware. This one is similar to the first systems programming track in the sense that you become adept with all types of computer systems, but you trade some of the software skills for hardware know-how. You'll learn everything about low power and high performance VLSI integrated circuits with thousands of transistors. You'll also learn different types of logic families and further FPGA logic programming for those who really like logic. If you think that sounds cool, then you might also enjoy the fourth and final concentration, the digital hardware path. This path throws away the majority of all software-related topics and supplements it with proficiency in the overall development and testing of logic circuits. To achieve this, you take another analog circuits class to prime you for intricate schemes of transistors and a high-speed digital design class to find out how digital electronics change properties when handling higher frequencies. You'll also take a deeper dive into computer architecture to better understand how to optimize your circuit and its efficiency with surrounding circuits. And with that, you finally clawed your way through the seemingly endless loads of timing diagrams, fit transistors, and mysterious bugs to reach the exciting peak of your degree, the capstone design course. Here, you actually engage in an all-inclusive engineering design process throughout an entire academic year. This is where students pick up the most real-life engineering skills from their entire degree. So make sure you're listening. To start, you pick a project and team that suits your needs and set realistic goals of what you can accomplish together. What's really cool here is that your team can be made up of all types of other engineers so you can each specialize in an area to make more well-rounded projects like drones with computer vision, next-gen gaming peripherals, or kickstart the future of automated vertical farms. We have also seen students reach out to local companies to see if they can work on a project for them, which usually leads to internships or job offers later down the line. Anything is game here, as long as you're using the skills you've gained in your degree and can convince your professors that there is a market for your project. This capstone project is almost always discussed in your first interviews out of college, so do your best to pick a project that utilizes the skills you plan to use in your career. For example, if you were interviewing for your dream job designing hardware for space shuttles, don't you think the interviewer would rather hear about how you did so for a cube satellite rather than work on the LED light show on a gaming mouse? Obviously, the prospect with more relevant, hands-on experience will get the job. We also recommend trying to take a role of leadership in your group, whether it be software lead, hardware lead, team lead, or any other. This too does wonders for your chances in finding a job right out of college. And there you have it. All that's left is to cross that stage, shake hands with the chancellor, and celebrate your sweet, sweet victory. But what's the next step? How do you find the perfect job right out of school? Check out this video that details the three steps to getting your dream job out of any engineering degree. If you want more information on computer engineering or one of its subfields, check them out on our channel. Thanks for watching, everyone.